Alright, welcome back guys. Here it is, part two of the torn cloth tutorial. And as you can see, I took a little more time and did a couple more wrinkles and folds and stuff like that into the cloak there. But it didn't take me long at all, just like five, ten minutes of just playing around, moving around. You saw, you saw that in the previous video. And for those that are just here for just tearing the cloth, I've got this tool available over... Uh, on Gumroad and Cubebrush. So just look in the description. I'll, uh, I'll give you a link. So all you gotta do is just load and torn cloth part two is this one. And this is really a quick and easy process. Okay, and we're just gonna do the cloak. Uh, we're just gonna tear that up. We're gonna leave the dress alone. And so let's look at our topology so far. Right now we're sitting at about 13,000, 14,000 points. And what we want to do, we'll go ahead and apply the subdivisions. And we'll probably crank it up well above, you know, a million or two. Right now it's three million. We're going to turn off the polyfill. And what we need to do is start uh, masking out areas that we want torn. Quick and easy. So go ahead and hold down your control. And we need to switch it back to freehand. We had it in lasso earlier there. We're going to do draw size down here. We don't need very big, big tears. And I'm going to turn on back face masking. So this way it doesn't catch the back side of the cloth. And we're just going to start drawing just wherever you want. We're just going to do this real quickly. Do like the edges of the... You know, maybe just where you, where you think some of these tears could be, you know. And draw that down. All right. Doesn't have to be crazy. You know, this has some battle damage. Who knows? Maybe it's her favorite cloak and she doesn't want to give it up. Everyone tells her to get rid of it. And she's like, no, I am just going to patch it up and it's going to be okay. It will not fall apart. So, yeah, like I said, we're just going to go around here, there, and everywhere. Find little spots where we want the tears to be. Not an exact science here. If you want to put more thought into it, great. But otherwise, nah, doesn't matter. Okay, I think we're okay, maybe, eh, just one or two up here. Right, I'm going to solo that just so I can see. Oops. Could be a bit of an overkill. Don't know. Okay. I'm done. I promise. All right. So go into geometry. Go into edge loop. And we'll turn on polyfill here. We're going to go ahead, delete lower. Turn off line. And do edge, edge loop mask border. Boom. Done. Okay. Clear your mask. And select your main cloth there. Take a look at everything. All right, all right, all right. Cool. And under modified topology, we'll go ahead and just delete hidden. Okay. And I just want to do, let me get select rectangle back on here. Just grab a piece of it, control shift A. That'll select everything, and then any oddities that aren't connected to anything, are, it won't capture. So we'll just delete hidden again. There we go. 
Now let's go to geometry, Z remesher. We're going to do target. We're going to target about. I like to get around uh, twenty-five thousand. Okay, and we're not in symmetry, so it's going to be pretty close to twenty-five thousand for us. So go ahead and Z remesh. This may take a second. Okay, longer than a second, sorry. All right, all done there. And as you can see, it's retopologized everything for us there. Let's take a look at how the edge flow is. It's not too bad. It's not bad at all. You kind of want it a little crunched up around the around the tears anyways. All right, cool. Okay, so so now we got our torn cloth. Now let's start adding all the little features to it. Turn on your dynamic there. Go under dynamic subdivision. We're going to turn down smooth. We don't want smooth going on here. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. And we're going to turn on micro poly, which is the new feature here. Oop. Select it, go down to weave one, and there we've got our basic stitching going on. And if any of you are familiar with uh, previous versions, this is actually has kind of been around for a while. This uh, micro poly, they just call it, there used to be something called a micro mesh that wasn't. Uh, wasn't necessarily live like this one is here. You would have to hit render before you'd ever see it. And so it's new-ish. So it's kind of a similar, you know, it, it's like a micro mesh uh, on steroids is what micro poly is. And then they've got some other features in here. You know, uh, aligned is always handy. Sometimes it'll, it won't line up quite where it's supposed to but you tap on that and it seems to do a pretty good job and you've got options for fit and weld which we're going to keep on because we want everything welded together when we uh, uh, create this into actual geometry because if you just turn off dynamic there's your original so it's just a, a preview and render purposes for right now all right so moving on what I want to do real quick, I want to go under masking. I want to mask by feature and change it to just border. Mask feature, border. Okay, great. Go into fiber mesh. This is going to add all our frayed edges real fast. So open up. I got to find it. Demo. Where's it at? Where did I put it? Oh, I think it's. No, it's part two. There it is. And torn cloth one. And there you go. Right now it's just in a preview mode. But go ahead and click accept. And you can go in here and you can mess with all these settings I have. That's fine. It's not a problem. You know, see what you see what you like. So click accept. It says it wants to do a fast preview. I always hit no. There we go. Now it's a live live or it's an actual sub tool now that it could be manipulated. Great. So let's go back to this extract here. And we're going to go ahead and go into our geometry and click doop, 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 apply on the dynamic subdivision. There we go. As you can see by your point count that it's uh, a whole lot more there than it was earlier. But now we can manipulate this, which is kind of cool. Clear that mask. So what I want to do is just do a deformation. I want to do inflate, let's try 0.5. There we go. It thickens up that uh, those seams a little bit, but we're going to go in there and we're going to mess with it. You know, because, you know, it's, it's tattered and torn and this and that. So real quick way to do that is go get your inflate brush switch an alpha on uh, alpha 8 is usually what I do 
switch it to sub, go down to about two, and you can have a larger draw size here. And I am just going to zoom in on something here. Maybe we'll zoom in on that one so you can kind of see what's happening. And then just work your way around it. See what it's doing? It's thinning out, stretching out all those threads that you just uh, that you just uh, created with the micro poly. So you go around the edges. You could do that. Gives it even more of an effect of you know it's about time to throw this cloak away. It's worthless, but it's your favorite cloak, and you've got to wear it. So yeah, we just go around and do that real quick. Let me. Zoom out here, get a larger brush. And as you can see, really cool, quick effect. Go up, go up the edges here. I'm just going through this quickly for the sake of the tutorial. I don't want to bore you guys with it. And see now you can switch it to add and you could do the reverse and uh, zoom in here so we can see adds a little more variety to your model here we'll go back to sub and because we got that alpha on there, it it's not all concentrated in just one little spot. It's just randomness. That's the name of the game with this one. You want a lot of randomness. All right, so that's enough of that for now. Let's go to back to our fibers. Let's get another brush, B, G, for the groom brushes. And we want to do lengthen. And we're going to do the same trick here. We're just going to grab that alpha again and then just go around and lengthen them up and it's kind of random here too because we've got that alpha in there so it's not grabbing them all uniformly you just stretch them out squinch squish them up do whatever you want whatever you like whatever your preference is if you need it like totally tattered make it totally tattered tattered it's your design you do what you want As you can see, we're getting a lot of detail real quickly and easily. Hardly any effort. Alright, cool. So, go back to our cloak and do a quick mask. Just click on the canvas and control click. Go to your fibers, fiber mesh again. Zoom in here. Open Torn Cloth 2. And see, it adds a bunch of these little itty bitty little itty bitty little threads or fuzz or whatever. It really adds a lot to it. Hit accept. No. Boom. Let's do a quick render here so we can see what our creation looks like and a nice render. And you go up here on my UI, just change the angle, change the blur, and we should get a decent little rendering. Give it a second to percolate.
Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Turned out pretty good. Let's take it one step more. Key shot. We'll go over to Key Shot 9 real quick. Got a real nice render off it the other night, so. Oh my goodness, it takes forever. But you'll see why here in a second. You'll see how many triangles show up here. So basically this method is super cool. Uh, game ready? No. <laughs> no way. No, as you can see, we got 34 million triangles going right now. See which one that's it. Oh, that's the dress. But we just zoom in. We can take a real close look here. Let me change image. My light end's a little wonky right now. Got set up for something else. And see, I've got. I did this cloak one here. It, really turned out nice. This little cloak material. There we go. Yes. As you can see, really cool, quick, super easy. Took us no time at all. Some torn cloth. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And we were, we're going to catch you in the next one. You guys have a great day.